Okay, so let's do the chanting right away. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Udham saranam gachami Dhammam saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Dudayam bi budham saranam gachami Dudayam bi dhammam saranam gachami Dudayam bi sangham saranam gachami Tadayam bi budham saranam gachami Tadayam bi dhammam saranam gachami Tadayam bi sangham saranam gachami Namo buddhaya, namo dharmaya, namo sanghaya Namo buddhaya, namo dharmaya, namo sanghaya Namo buddhaya, namo dharmaya, namo sanghaya I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six paramitas, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six paramitas, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six paramitas, may I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May they be free from suffering and its causes. May they never be parted from their happiness beyond suffering. And may they abide in equanimity, free of bias, attachment to the near and aversion from the far. I shall cause this great compassion and Buddha, please inspire me to be able to do so. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind and present clouds of every types of offerings, actual and mentally transformed. I confess all of my negative actions accumulated since beginning was time and rejoice in all of the virtues of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until cyclic existence ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for all sentient beings. I dedicate the virtues of myself and others to the great enlightenment. However innumerable all sentient beings are about to save them all, however inexhaustible my delusions are about to extinguish them all, however immeasurable the Dharma teachings are about to master them all, However endless the Buddha's way is, I vow to follow it completely. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Tayata Hum Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhisattva. Tayata um gati gati para gati para sam gati bodhisattva. Tayata um gati gati para gati para sam gati bodhisattva. So now get yourself ready for some meditation. I hope that those of you who uh, watch the video. Um, that I put up on Tuesday or maybe even the live event. Um, I hope you enjoyed the longer meditations, a little over an hour altogether, including the chanting. So if you didn't have a look at that, then I think I so I would have reposted it, I think, on the Thursday or maybe Wednesday, something like that. So you can have a look or, or you can just go to the YouTube channel 
And I put up some new uh, videos that Sita in Thailand um, has re-edited um, to do with previous things that I've done, um, events that I have um, spoken at or during, I should say, because they're online. And uh, you can have a look at those videos too. I put up another three today. And then there was a few during the week as well. So now forget everything I just said and let's do some meditation. So bring your mind inside your body. Gently closing your eyes, unless you prefer to have your eyes open a little. If you do, look down in front of you. Find something to focus on. Then keep, try to keep your eyes nice and still and calm. Don't be distracted by visual objects around you. But I think most people like to have their eyes closed. But make sure you don't fall asleep when you have your eyes closed. So now we're going to scan the body to release some tension or whatever tension that we can release. All the way from the tips of your toes, up your legs, up your upper torso, to your shoulders, and then down to the tips of your fingers, and then back up to the top of your head. So now let's do this for a, a little while. After you've scanned your body, gone through all the parts and released the tension, it's helpful to re-scan your body just to see if there's any more leftover tension. And also remembering that when we are releasing the tension from the body, we're also releasing the tension from the mind. And it has the tendency to bring the mind inside the body, help us to not dwell on the past, plan for the future and live in the present. So now bring your focus to placing your mind on your breath. Initially the tip of your nose and follow the breath, the feeling of the breath as you breathe all the way into the lungs and then back out your nose again. Breathing in, breathing out. That's all we have to focus on right now. If thoughts arise or any mental agitation or sensations arise, don't cling to them, grasp at them. Try to force them away or deny them. Just let them go naturally by replacing your mind back onto the breath. And if while meditation sessions, you start to get a little bit dull-minded or sleepy, then refocus on your breath more brightly. Don't try too hard and try too little. We have to make the effort, you know, to apply the antidote of replacing the mind back onto the breath. But do so with a relaxed mind. Don't get irritated with yourself. So now let's practice like this for a few minutes in silence.
So now we can feel very pleased with ourselves for engaging in this short session. If you can, if it's possible for you, then the regular meditation sessions should be just a little bit longer than these ones. Fill yourself with universal loving kindness, with friendliness, harmlessness, non-violence, appreciation, respect. For you are your own best friend. Fill your whole being with universal love and kindness. So much so that it now overflows and radiates outwards, initially to your loved ones, family and friends. Filling, filling them as well with universal love and kindness. May they be happy, free from suffering, and may they be peaceful. And gradually, let's radiate our universal love and kindness out further and further now to include strangers, filling them with universal love and kindness. May they be happy, free from suffering and be peaceful. And now also to those that may, may regard as enemies, those people that we find difficult, or even worse than that. May they also be filled with your, your universal loving kindness and they themselves develop this loving kindness as well. May they be happy, free from suffering and be peaceful. Now radiate further to also include all of the living beings that are around your immediate area. No matter what type of physical form they take, what type of minds they currently have, may they all find happiness, may they be free from suffering and be peaceful whether they are flying through the air, living on the land, in the waters, whether weak or strong, great or small, short or tall, seen or unseen, near or distant, born or to be born. And now radiate this love and kindness out to all of the living beings throughout your whole state or county. and other states and counties throughout your whole country. The radiation of this universal loving kindness is now gathering so much momentum, like a tidal wave of loving kindness, spreading out further and further and further, to now also include other planets, or sorry, other countries throughout the whole world, those that you have an affinity towards, those you don't know much about, and even those that, for whatever reason, you may have some negative feelings towards. Have your love and kindness pervade throughout all of these countries throughout the whole world. May all sentient beings throughout our whole world, the innumerable living beings, may they be happy, free from suffering, and may they be peaceful. Now throughout other worlds, throughout the whole solar system. And other solar systems throughout the whole galaxy. 
and other galaxies throughout the whole universe and throughout infinite space. This immeasurable love and kindness generated within your own mind or from within your own mind and now radiating throughout infinite space of which we are not separate. We are all interconnected. And also be present here and now to recite the dedication prayer. Due to this merit, may I soon attain the enlightened state of the Buddha, so that I may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. May the precious bodhicitta not yet born rise and grow. May that born have no decline but increase forevermore. And may the precious view of shunyata not yet born arise and grow. May that born have no decline but increase forevermore. <clears throat> So we are now, um, as you remember, I'm addressing some questions that have come in over the last seven or eight months or so. And a lot of them to do with the law of karma, the law of cause and effect. Or you could say the universal law of karma. Karma and vipaka. Karma meaning the cause or action and vipaka meaning the effect or the consequence of the action, for instance, okay? So we did, we spoke about it last week uh, and um, I rushed sort of the last couple of minutes last week. So I'll go over them today as well as talk about how all living beings want happiness and want to avoid suffering. But we don't realize a lot of the time or we haven't habituated ourselves with this, that we have to cause this happiness and avoid causing the suffering. So what to adopt, what to abandon on the path. So I'll speak about that in, in just a moment. So last week, I pretty much finished up with the example of a wall. Let's say you, you're going to build a wall or a fence or some sort of partition. And of which I have done this before, many, many years ago with some other friends. Um, and also I read about it um, in a book by Arjun Brown. And um, basically the wall that I helped to build or partition really, small sort of um, area, the area or the part of the wall that I did, there was one brick that was crooked, quite crooked actually, but still the wall was still very strong and it functioned in the way it was supposed to function. It was to help protect the veggie garden from, you know, children running onto it, and, you know, playing sports and destroying the seedlings and so forth. So actually, that we actually built it and it was really good. There wasn't a problem with it. It was very strong. All of the other bricks were very straight. And even around that one crooked brick, the cement, the mortar, you know, was strong. So it was holding it in place. Of course, there was that much at one end, that much at the other end. And so I noticed that every time, you know, for probably on and off for months, when I walked past that little partition or wall, all I saw was that one brick. Now, I, I didn't get down about it, so don't get me wrong here, but I just I thought it was quite amusing that a, maybe 100, 200 bricks, I don't know how many, but one crooked one, and that's the one I saw every time. Now, part of the reason for that is it was different to all of the other bricks. It looked different. But the other part of it was it was faulty. And I think us people, we tend to look at our faults. We also look at the faults of others. Now, I'm not talking about looking at the faults for good reason. I'm talking about getting down on ourselves sometimes. We, we tend to, you know, look at our, at our anger, and our actions based on this. We tend to look at our you know, self-centeredness and things like that and get down on ourselves. Of course, if we look at our faults to 
understand our mind and to purify them, then that's a different story. That's actually very, very good. But that's not clinging to these faults. That's not getting down on ourselves about these faults. That's applying the Dharma teachings. So this part of the question comes, or this question, uh, this part of the talk, comes from the thought of being down on ourselves. How do we stop being down on ourselves? And I say this, there's many, many methods to do this, but I think maybe the easiest one, the best one right now, is to focus on your good qualities. Just like this wall, let's say there's 100 bricks. 99 of those bricks were good. The cement in between the bricks was good. There was one brick that wasn't good, but we focus on that one brick. So we get down on ourselves. And I think we create attachment to this. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's almost like we perceive our faults and us getting down on ourselves and our suffering. We perceive it as part of ourselves. And it's almost like sometimes if somebody is offering some solution, some possible solutions for you to help to give up and alleviate or alleviate your suffering, it's almost like you say, no, that's my, my suffering. You can't have it. It's mine. How dare you try to take my suffering away from me? You know, I say that with a little bit of humor, but I think it's we do that because we have habit to cling to ourselves. And so I'm telling you right now, look at your good faults. Oh, look, good faults. Look at your good qualities. <laughs> and actually, if you look at your faults, look at them to purify them. You have good qualities in abundance. We also have faults in abundance. Once again, I say, if we look at our faults, do so so that we can purify them. If we look at our good qualities, do so to uplift ourselves, but also so that we know what they are, so that we can nurture them. We can eventually perfect them. You have good qualities. You have friendliness, appreciation, gratitude, acceptance. Learn to accept ourselves as well as we are right now. Doesn't mean that we won't change for the better. Just make sure we don't change for the worse. And then also acting out when we get down on ourselves. This is something that is very destructive. And actually in the scriptures, it says that we destroy a lot of good karma, you know, with these outbursts of anger. And, you know, especially it is, all of it's directed to ourselves, but if we include others in it and then affect, affect them in a negative way, then obviously the negative karma multiplies, becomes worse. Okay, so try your best, first of all, to not do that. You know, if you recognize some negativity arising, then um, like I say, nip it in the bud, recognize it there, don't act upon it, you know, don't make it worse. And so go back to the example of a wall. You can see that even if 50 of the bricks out of 100 bricks were crooked, there's still 50 bricks that are straight. You understand? In other words, even if you have lots of faults, you also have lots of good qualities. So focus on these good qualities and then follow up on them with good thoughts, good attitudes, good speech, if you're engaging in speaking with others, good actions, whether it's actions solely um, when you're with yourself or, or with others, engaging with others, then follow it, follow it through and then you multiply the goodness. So I think um, that'll do for that at the moment. Where was that? So my, my little note here is one brick out. That's, that's the note. Uh, good qualities and faults. Okay, so we've done that. Um, beings, we want to be happy. I think there's nobody around that doesn't want to be happy, even though what I said earlier, we cling to our suffering. But really, we don't want suffering. And I guess to quote myself, the bodhisattvas, 
great practitioners have a healthy fear for the cause. Ordinary beings like us right now, we have an unhealthy fear of the effect. So we don't want to suffer. But what I mean by a healthy fear of the cause is that we, or the great bodhisattvas, for instance, on the way to becoming a Buddha, the great practitioners, they will avoid causing the suffering rather than getting upset or down when you experience the suffering after it's already caused. So with no cause, there's no effect. So if we don't cause the suffering, we will not experience the suffering. And with happiness, you must cause the happiness if you want it. You must engage in thoughts that are wholesome, beneficial thoughts, attitudes, and then follow through with more good thoughts, good speech, meaningful speech, skillful speech, sweetly, and also good actions. And then we will cause happiness for ourselves at the same time, causing happiness for others and helping them to do likewise. Even if it's only through your good uh, vibes, you know, your good influence, at least you give others the opportunity to follow, realize, oh, this is good. I will do this as well. So all beings want happiness, don't want suffering. And of course, if you're a sincere Buddhist practitioner, you want to attain enlightenment. You don't want just happiness because the happiness is impermanent. But along the way, you can cause this happiness. So in a sense, even though um, I'm just using this as an example of practicing the Dharma along the way and experiencing the good stuff along the way, you know, and is the, maybe we should aim for the Mahasukha. Sukha means happiness or bliss. Maha means great. So in a sense, I'm saying aim for enlightenment. And then along the way, you will experience the ordinary sukha, the ordinary happiness, you know, for, for sure. So the ordinary happiness and the experiences you get along the way, the great experiences. I use this, this example often. It's like a ladder. So there's 10 rungs on a ladder. You're going up. You, you're aiming to the top, enlightenment. And you get to experience all of the steps along the way, all of this happiness, all of the effects of the good karma, the effects of the merit, virtue along the way. So aim high. Don't be, get ahead of yourself, of course. Realize that we have a fair bit of Dharma practice to do before we can achieve that goal. But put your mind there, you know, renounce the worldly ways as much as you can, aim to enlightenment, and then you will experience the happiness along the way and start to free yourself from the suffering and really get to understand the universal law of karma so that you can understand what type of mind states, speech, actions, and the like, uh, cause happiness and engage in them, and also those that cause suffering and avoid engaging in them. Okay, so that's really important that we do that. Otherwise, what we'll do, even if we're not really doing hugely bad things, but we're still going to be reinforcing our lack of understanding, the lack of wisdom, reinforcing our attachments to things that we think are pleasurable and reinforcing our aversion from things that we find unpleasant. So really work to undo it. I use the example again of a knot. Let's say you have a knot. It's quite loose knot. It's you know not tied up too much. Then actually it's quite easy to undo. Okay, but if the knot starts to become tight and then you know more knots around it, it's very difficult to undo. It takes longer. So the more we, we reinforce our attachments, the more we reinforce aversion and our lack of wisdom, then the longer it will take to undo it. Okay, so it can get very frustrating. You know, when you, um, 
uh, shoelaces and maybe you've done them up tw twice or three times uh, going for a walk or a run or something like that. And for whatever reason, you've actually tied it too tight. And if you don't have strong, longer nails, and of course, I, my nails are short, um, it's very hard to undo those knots, isn't it? Um, and the next bit that I'd like to mention was uh, I went on a little bit last week about the um, how the law of karma relates all, obviously to rebirth. Um, what how we are reborn as as a human being in this life. Remember that this is a precious human life too. We have great opportunities, lots of freedoms to be able to practice the Dharma. So we should never waste this life, you know. And even if we do waste it a little bit, then recognize that and say, ah. That's the old habit. Now, straight into Dharma practice. Purify my mind, you know. Benefit others. Benefit myself as well along the way. Um, but we are born in this human condition because we caused it from previous lifetimes. And this comes from good causes. To be born as a human being is very rare. To be born as a human being in touch with the Dharma and practicing the Dharma is extremely rare. And so rejoice in that. But we do have faults. So you can say, mm, okay, now I need, I caused these faults. I caused my suffering. I caused my difficulties that I experienced in this human life. I caused them before. So look into your mind and understand the law of karma and, and what possibilities uh, or what was the possible causes um, of our suffering right now, and then work to undo that, undo those knocks. Um, but also the goodness that you have right now, uh, you caused that before as well. And of course, right now, you will cause the next moment. Now, of course, this comes from previous lifetimes as well, previous actions, obviously in this lifetime too. Uh, but also this action right now in your state of mind right now causes the next moment, the next moment of consciousness. And so let's say as well, you can say that what we do today affects tomorrow, along with everything from the past as well. What we do this week will affect next week. What we do this month will affect next month. What we do this year will affect next year. So what we do in this lifetime will affect, affect the next lifetime. Where does it stop? Like I mentioned last week, the other possibilities are just nonsensical, really. The law of karma is the way that things come into being and pass from being. Cause, effect. When the cause comes, when, when something arises, then the effect will arise. When the cause and effect is ready to cease, then that will cease. Okay, so because of this, there is that. When this is no more, that is no more. And so contemplate on this and get to really understand it and learn what to adopt and what to abandon. Adopt the causes of happiness, especially adopt the causes of enlightenment, you know, working towards realizing true wisdom, the great compassion, and so forth. And what to abandon, all of these negativities that we may have. And so next week, I will go into a little bit more detail of the different realms of existence. And then that will cover these questions that relate to the law of karma. And I'll go on to some other questions, just random ones that I'll pick up. And feel free to shoot me some um, questions yourself, no matter what they're about. And I will get to addressing them uh, pretty soon. Okay. And realms of existence. I will speak about them in sort of not too much detail on what we call the three realms, uh, the realms of the desire realm, form realm, and formless realms. Um, but I'll go into a fair bit of detail when we speak about 
the six realms, which I won't go any more than that today because I know it's under one minute. And I think maybe you can do a bit of research yourself, maybe Google and look up. So if it's in your books, look up the six realms and then you can also look up three realms. Okay. I rejoice in your goodness as always. Please maintain a good intention and stay safe physically, mentally. Cause happiness, avoid causing suffering. Avoid clinging to your suffering. If somebody gives you good advice to let go of it, use that good advice. I rejoice.